Welcome to the program. There's further confirmation today that Australia is on the verge of a so-called gas rush. The Queensland Government has given the green light to a third massive project to pipe coal seam gas hundreds of kilometres from inland wells to the port of Gladstone on the central Queensland coast. There's growing world demand for gas, which is cleaner than coal and cheaper than oil. But the sudden expansion of coal seam gas extraction in Queensland has pitted mining companies against farming communities, which are concerned about the impact this mining activity could have on underground aquifers. aquifers. There's been similar concerns in the US, which were recently documented in the prize-winning film Gasland, shown for the first time to an Australian audience in Brisbane last night. Peter McCutcheon reports. It's a provocative and controversial scene from an award-winning documentary. Whoa, Jesus Christ. According to filmmaker Josh Fox, it demonstrates the threat posed by the US natural gas industry, apparently immune to environmental controls. I smell hair. <laughs> oh, damn. Place after place, time after time, you see these people who could light their water on fire. Stories of just being completely upended, losing your control over your life, over your land, over your health. You're going to see little pearls of stuff come out of it, mm -hmm. like oil. But what some see as a groundbreaking expose the gas and petroleum industry sees as thinly disguised propaganda. It lacks the hard evidence-based research that, that you need to qualify as a, as a documentary. And the controversy has come to Australia with the launch of the documentary Gasland in Brisbane. The film is being shown at a critical time with the recent approval of coal seam gas projects in Queensland and a concerted campaign from environmentalists and farming groups to halt the industry's expansion. There has been a steady stream of emails and Facebook entreaties and people screaming, please bring the film here, we're suffering, we're in trouble. As we've seen in the US experience, this seeking of dollars, this absolute necessity to, to raise money by state treasuries will sometimes override good environmental practice. Gasland tells the story of how the Bush administration's deregulation of environmental laws in 2005 led to a rapid expansion of shale gas drilling across the United States. And the result has been widespread pollution of water supplies in many rural communities. Six states have documented over 1,000 incidents of groundwater contamination. It bubbles and hisses when it comes out. Josh Fox blames a drilling process known as hydraulic fracturing or fracking. It blasts a mix of water and chemicals 8,000 feet into the ground. The fracking itself is like a mini earthquake. The intense pressure breaks apart the rock and frees up the gas. It's important to know that it has absolutely no relevance to the production and regulation of coal seam gas in Australia. Ross Dunn is a spokesman for the industry body, the Australian Petroleum Producers and Exploration Association. He says the natural gas industry in Australia is very different to that of the US. The gas is extracted from the coal seam, not shale. Fracking is not used as widely. And the industry is subject to some of the toughest environmental conditions in the world. In Australia, I mean, the industry is, is, uh, is very transparent. Uh, we have a, a lot of government regulation, a lot of environmental regulation. We have many processes which, which show that the industry is operating sustainably. Indeed, strict environmental conditions forced the shutting down of a pilot project early this year to produce gas under the ground by setting coal seams on fire. This process, known as underground coal gasification, was believed responsible for the leaking of benzene into ground bores near Kingaroy. If this technology cannot be uh, operated safely, then it has no future in Queensland. But another coal technology, extracting gas from the coal seam, has passed a number of environmental hurdles. Last month, the federal government approved two coal seam gas projects in Queensland, and Britain's BG Group announced it would be expanding coal seam gas operations and build a 540-kilometre pipeline from the Surat Basin to the port of Gladstone. We estimate that the project will increase economic activity in Queensland by 32 billion Australian dollars. It is a new industry for Australia in terms of export opportunities. It is a first. 
And today, the Queensland Premier announced a joint venture between Origin Energy and ConocoPhillips had met the state's environmental conditions. And with our third company now into the approval phase, this new industry is really gaining momentum. But many farmers whose land lies on top of these gas reserves are unimpressed. The extraction of gas from the coal seam brings with it leftover salty water. And there are concerns about the long-term effects this will have on the Great Artesian Basin. There's also been several cases of toxic hydrocarbons found in coal seam gas wells, although these ponds were isolated from aquifers and water streams. We have a whole new industry that's going to enter the scene and be allowed to extract a huge amount of water. It could be up to 350,000 megalitres a year uh, from the Great Artesian Basin, and they just have open licence to do this. Wayne Newton is a grain grower on Queensland's Darling Downs and the grain spokesman for Queensland's peak agriculture group, AgForce. He's seen the Gaslands documentary and believes it has some relevance to an Australian audience. But I think the real point of um, similarity is the, is the conflict of interest that occurs within government. These governments have got huge conflicts with then being also the single largest beneficiary of the revenue that's going to come from this industry. There is no other industry, I don't think any other industry in Australia, is regulated to the extent that the coal seam gas industry is regulated. It was a sell-out session for the documentary's Australian premiere, and the follow-up Q&A session was sympathetic to the filmmaker. Can that film tour regionally? Because I know Palace doesn't have distribution areas out in the West. Can you take the film out so people... I think it's happening. I mean, in fact, Josh Fox says he'll be taking his camera with him. So will we see um, Gasland Australia? I think so. I think so. I mean, at least a segment of uh, the next part of this, whether that's a full-length feature film, which is a sequel, or it's a shorter follow-up. Uh, yeah, absolutely. There are nearly 4,000 coal seam gas wells across rural Queensland at the moment. With the potential for this to increase nearly tenfold, the industry acknowledges it needs to do more work to bring rural communities on board. Who do you think is winning the PR war at the moment? Well, the industry... The industry has a lot of work to do, and we, we know that. Peter McCutcheon reporting from Queensland.